Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome back to Starfield. I've been playing so much of this this week. I've been having a blast with it. Thank you, Bethesda, for sponsoring this video. Starfield is available over on Xbox, Game Pass, and PC. Links in the description. Today, we're going to be talking about my favorite mechanic in Starfield, one that we haven't seen in any of the sci-fi, like, open-world games that we've had over the last maybe 15 years. This is John Rowland. I'm not gonna give you any real spoilers to any of the plots or anything like that, so don't you worry. What we're gonna be talking about today is boarding enemy ships and okay, taking them okay. over. Uh, today we chose violence, all right? Let's get into the cockpit. I've got a mission. We got a bit of a bounty. We got a pirate causing trouble out on the rim, and we're gonna have to deal with him. So I picked up this bounty off of one of the mission terminals. So you can pick these up at any time. You can do this with any ship that you're in combat with, and we're going to talk about Roland's first time actually doing a boarding action because I think it's hilarious. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and take off, get into orbit, and then set a course for where we're going. I can get back into my cockpit view. I actually really like this bridge. Maybe my second favorite bridge so, bridge so far. This, hilariously, is the Frontier, by the way. That's the original starting ship. It looks nothing like what you'll start with when you start the game because I have just swapped parts out. I don't know how many times. We must have spent at least four hours when we were streaming this, customizing, customizing our ship. We actually did a video on building this one, and it's still getting some modifications here and there. Got a new jump drive on it, got new fuel tanks in the center there. Ah, so freaking cool. All right, um, honestly, this is about as wide or as long as you can get. I pushed it to the limit, and it's huge, right? All right, anyways, let's go ahead and set a course. If you don't know, when you're in space, if you don't want to go into a lot of menus, if you go into scan mode, and then you point towards whatever your mission is, you can actually hit A, target it, and use, you don't have to go into the menus to set courses and, and jump uh, with your grab drive. You can do this a little bit more immersively. And I think that's a big problem a lot of people are having, is that they feel like they're, they're fast traveling all the time. You don't have to go into the menus and feel like you're fast traveling. And you get the sweet animation. There we go. All right, now let's find this. He's right below us. Okay, our port. Crimson Fleet Capt. Oh, I love those twin engines. So our objective, he's boosting right now. Let's get behind him. Is to dismantle his shields and to take out those engines. Now, my ship is all about what you're seeing right there. Those tracking missiles do a ton of damage. I've invested fairly heavily into them this early into the game. Let's go ahead and come back around. And I've also got pretty decent shields. So he has managed to knock them down to 49%. I'm going to put my last point into shields so we can get those recharging. Now, I'm going to pause real quick. We're going to go to skills. If you want to do boarding actions, if you want to disable enemy ships, the bare minimum of what you're going to need to do that is level one in targeting control. Now, Roland here started out as a bounty hunter, so he ended up starting with boost pack training, which I have maxed out, and in 51% gravity, earth grab, uh, he can just fly, and I love it. He just boosts around at, like, <laughs> way up into the air, which means you can throw mines and carpet bomb enemies when they get in your way. Anyways, I digress. We've been streaming this over on Twitch, and that is probably my favorite maneuver so far. Uh, we got piloting he started with as well. This will let you get better ships, which we talked about in the last video for Starfield. Targeting control system, though, is what you really need if you want to do boarding actions. Uh, what you need is rank one. It'll let you do unlock ship targeting functionality. This doesn't mean just general targeting. because That's not very descriptive. What it means is if I'm looking at the ship that I have a lock on and I have to have a lock on them, if I hit X, we go into the slow-mo mode and then I can flip through subsystems to engage. He is turning slightly to port. I'm gonna start firing as soon as I feel like I can get my main cannons on him. Let's go ahead and fire off some missiles. That top bar on his health is his shield. So his shields are still up. So I'm gonna put a few missiles into him. I'll even use a few of my railgun shots. Now there is a, a certain limited amount of time you can go into that mode. Kind of reminds me like a mixed version of VATS almost in space. Now what's cool about the weapon systems that I've got here is that this one is super accurate. Actually, these are not, these are kind of spread damage. I don't want to kill him. I got to be real careful I don't do too much damage. All right, stay behind him, stay behind him. He's boosting. I see his engines just lit up, so I don't have a lock, so I can't do that targeting mode. I'm trying to stay behind him so I don't take too much damage and I let my shields recharge. Lucky for me, he didn't have any backup. All right, let's put a few more rounds into him. Let's not get him get those shields back. Missiles away. All right, his engines are down to two pips, and he'll actually start slowing down because of this. Now that he's down, I can hit X. It'll play out the docking animation, which I've noticed you don't really seem to take damage when this plays, so don't freak out if you're boarding during like a little bit of a larger fight, like I was on my first boarding. And we're in. 
Now, you can just go straight to hold X and you'll board the ship instantly instead of having to walk through yours to get to your, your docking ring. Um, or we can get up and actually walk over to where our hatch is. I'm just gonna go to board because my ship is pretty big and it takes me a while to get down to where I dock from over on the port side. So we're on their ship now. We've just come through, let me go first person. We've just come through our docking ring there. That's up to the frontier. And now we can start making our way. I can actually see a pirate in there and you never know what you're gonna find in here. Um, I found a few alien creatures before. I found some 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 uh, different variations of pirate depending on who we're after. Uh, I'm actually really wounded. So let me go ahead and take a med pin. And all right, you ready? Sam, let's do this, we're boarding. I love the fact that because they're using up, hello. I'm using an old earth shotgun. Okay, higher in the back right. One with an ax. Go, you gonna join us? Come on, man. It's a level 16 too, so he's a couple levels above me, but I think I got him. There we go. Because they use a modular system for Starfield's ship design, it means that uh, you never know what you're gonna find in these rooms, but you may recognize them and know your way around a little bit. Like this right here is the bridge. This is a crew control module for Stroud, I think? For the same company that most of my ship is made out of, I actually have this module on my ship. I think this one's a little bit different though. And you can pick up and interact with stuff on these ships, right? Like I can pick up this little binder here and throw it around. Like not all this stuff is just locked down. It is, you know, a Bethesda RPG. You do have full access to the, ah, to the items. Uh, pair of binoculars there. I can't wait till a mod comes out that make these actually usable. We've talked about that quite a bit. Let's grab some ammunition and find the rest of these pirates so that we can take this ship over. Uh, watch out, that right there would explode if I shot it with a poisonous gas. We don't wanna be near those when they go off. So we know that we're not gonna go there that way. Uh, we need to find, there we go, another hatch. All depends on how their ship is laid out. There should be fairly linear. Oh, this is an armory, whoa! Yeah, security chief in the armory. The shotgun, fantastic boarding weapon. Where are you running? Come back here. You come back here. There's no running in baseball. Reloading. Uh, oh man, there aren't very many weapons in their armory. The last time I boarded a ship similar to this one, this was completely stacked with weapons. And I actually found the only energy weapon that I have enjoyed so far. And I don't like energy weapons. Co. Where did you get that? I never, I gave him a, one of these shotguns because I thought we'd be like shotgun buddies when we boarded ships and stuff, but apparently not. Now we're not a pirate, though you can be a pirate in this. Uh, oh, is this a different version? No, it's the, okay, yes, I don't mind if I do try this one out. Hello. Oh yeah, take and hold with A. I am playing on PC, by the way. I'm just using an Xbox controller because it's comfortable. I can go into full slouch mode. Better we get it than someone else. Uh, what's this guy for? It? Oh, right. This is the weapon that, no. This is the weapon that has that split fire. Even back in the old, like, New Vegas days, you know, other Bethesda and, and uh, Fallout 3, the energy weapons just, I just, I like my ballistics. And I'm perked out for ballistics too, so. All right. We must be coming up to the bridge soon. Though that is our primary objective, find every one of the pirate crew and deal with them so that we can claim the ship. I'd be really surprised if there wasn't anybody on board the, yep, on board the bridge. All right, we got incoming. I love that he's using like <laughs> Oh, all right. That thing seems to stop. I have learned that if you give your companions a grenade, they will use them. But because they don't use ammo, they'll just always have grenades on them. It's fantastic. But be careful, because it just adds to the chaos. Move it up. Are we clear? What is this brit? Oh, I've, yes. This is cool. So, fun point of fact, uh, Roland has never seen this bridge before. One of my other characters have, but this character has not. And he's never been to the place where you can purchase this at one of the manufacturing places. Uh, and I won't talk about any spoilers like that. You have to find it yourself, but look at this bridge. It's got a navigation table, which you can't use, by the way. On my ship, my, um, my crew quarters actually has a navigation table where you can just kind of give orders or you can get into the pilot seat. Oh man, I love these windows. And you can see down there. Oh, very, very cool. So I th think we might still have more on board. Maybe not. 
No, I think we might be clear, actually. So you're not quite done. Once you have cleared the pirates off the ship, or at least the former crew, I'm not going to judge you. You do you, you dirty pirate. Let's go ahead and undock from the frontier our ship. And don't worry, we're not leaving it here and just abandoning it. Imagine that, like, your crew is now taken over for you, and you're going to meet up some... It is weird to see my ship in that animation. <laughs> well, now that we're... Oh, man. This thing is sick. Oh, I love, look how big the bridge is. The bridge is like one third the size of this entire ship and then how massive my ship is above it. All right, the engine's just self-repaired. So I've always figured that's kind of like your crew doing the work. It takes a little while because remember you did disable them, but just hang out for a minute. Let them do the work. They'll start repairing. You can actually see the engine uh, pips. Now that it has one engine pip, uh, it's starting to fix the rest of them and they will fix over time. I'll actually slow down a little bit, give them a chance to work on it bunch of ships if you want to like frontier is still owned by us and we will see it once we dock back up let's set a course as they fix up the engines and all I'll, I'll warm these up let's boost yeah this thing is cool looking this thing we swap out those weapons on the top a eh? which it looks like it's got some kind of rapid fire energy actually it might not be so bad let's check those out what do we got now, what's funny is we can actually register this from here. I didn't know you could do this. I thought you had to land to register when you were talking to your ship work area. Notice how much it's going to cost. So that's the balancing point, I think, with, you know, capturing ships and then trying to sell them, is that you're going to find that the registration cost is going to eat into your profits. You'll still make a profit. I want to say this is, a, you know, a certain percentage of how much it costs to register. But once it's registered, you can make modifications to it and just treat it like it's your main ship. It does everything that the Frontier did or used to do. I will go ahead and register this because, honestly, I think this is my new starting point for my ship. And I'm going to start making some upgrades to it. Well, go ahead and bring it back, though. Let's. Oh, we were going to check out weapon systems real quick. Yeah, what were those? What were those rapid-fire cannons on the top? All right, so there's our weapon system. Uh, we have a Dragon 241P Pulse Laser, which is a fire rate of five. All right, all right. A little missile pod on the bottom there. Range isn't bad. Oh, it's an EM weapon. Not bad. Actually, this is because they're pirates, and this is one of those things where if you really want to get into capturing ships, grab an EMP weapon, and you'll do less damage to the other components, you know, less risk of actually destroying the ship you want to capture. We're gonna make some modifications to you. You look like you could use maybe some twin torpedo slash missile launchers and maybe some DACA ion or uh, auto cannons on the top and maybe an upgraded shield system. It is running. Everything on this ship right now is a class B and that's pretty cool. Ooh. Oh, these, these thrusters are 9480. Fairly certain that's better than the Frontier's new thrusters. 9480 versus a 7,000 on engine thrust. Yeah, yeah. I think Crimson Fleet Ship, like, build this out and give it a couple of, like, nacelle pods would be very cool. A little bit more thrust to it. Maybe go for, I'm keeping that bridge for sure. Maybe up the, the cargo capacity. But it is ours, and we have registered it, which cost us about 24,000 credits to do so, which I, I quite like. You will make a little money. Bringing a ship back is definitely worth it. Also, once you do that, once you make it your home ship, which we have done. Everything in our last ship has been transferred to this one. And that's not just the cargo holds. That is everything on the walls, everything sitting on the floor, everything that you've placed in your ship as a decoration will end up in the cargo hold of your new ship. So keep that in mind, as you're probably going to want to dig out your decorations, uh, your stuffed animals, and all the stuff that was in your armory on your walls, dig that out of your cargo and stick it on the ship. All right, let's go ahead and set a course. I'm heading home with my new baby. This thing is cool. There she is. My new used to be, but not anymore pirate ship. It may not be new, but she's new to me. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you Bethesda for sponsoring the video. Expect more Starfield content because I am just enthralled by this game. It is the catnip for me. Space RPG with space combat and a, and a fairly decent skill system I quite like. Yeah, I'm here for it. I'll see you all in the next video. Later, everybody. So about those missile systems.